Hello folks. Well, last night right after flying one of the best Kyosho helicopters I ever had, the Kyosho Concept 30 SR, that SR stands for Skyrunner by the way, we had a mini air show from a couple of the local pilots and as I promised I flew my Kyosho Hyperfly no-tail rotor helicopter both ways, stock and then with the wheels and electronic speed control installed. So here we go. <laughs> Perfect. Ha ha ha. Excellent. Yes. Uh... So this is the Hyperfly. This is the first tail rotorless helicopter. I invented this for Kyosho a long time ago. Uh, the main thing is you have to understand how and why it flies. And like any machine, once you learn how it works, you'll be able to fly it just fine. Now I'm going to fly it right now the stock way with the whisker switch on the bottom that shuts off when I land. And I put it on and it's full power and I will hand launch it into forward flight. Full power. No tail rotor, left, right turns, so what you do is you fly it until the battery starts to run low. When it runs low, you line up and you land it like a regular airplane. I designed it for guys who just wanted to learn how to fly, but didn't want to learn how to hover. You see, back then, hovering helicopters was pretty hard, and hence why I designed the Hyperfly, and why I wrote my nine helicopter tips and rules of thumb. I was trying to make it easier for people to get into helicopters. You see, it flies in forward flight just like an airplane. The tail, shaped exactly like a frisbee which creates side lift, follows along like a weather vane. You know, when the battery gets low, torque on the body also decreases proportionately and the machine lands easily. They just lined it up and land. It's easy. This is only two channels, left and right cyclic and fore and aft cyclic. But just like anything, it takes practice and understand how and why it works. It took years off of learning a four channel heli by learning the right stick on this kind of a machine. What's well, now on display at the San Diego Aerospace Museum and the AMA Museum. Uh, Aki Suzuki of Kyosho told me it was the number one selling product in Japan for seven years and was perfect for teaching fixed wing pilots how to fly helicopters. Okay, I'll let's just bring her around here and line it up. And as with any airplane, you want to land into the wind and you want to wait for the motor to start slowing down. And 
and that's the way you do it. Now I've added the gray plane throttle speed control. This taught pilots the left stick and also allowed complete hovering and slight to heavy breezes. Hyperfly loved to fly in the wind. The stock setup you can see was wired through a whisker switch and a fuse. It used a simple Zener diode to limit the voltage to run the receiver. So here's how it works. This has a switch on it. Turn that on. Starts blinking. Receiver comes on. Everything is a go. It's got a built-in BEC. And now I run the throttle up, full throttle, nothing. Bring it back. It's now armed. And I have a speed controller on the Hyperfly. It makes it a lot easier to, to fly. Because when you land, the torque goes away on the tail rotor and you don't need to worry about it. Okay folks, I'm going to fly the Hyperfly tonight. I've put an electronic speed controller in it so I can show how much easier it is to land in full power. So now it's a three channel. So let's see how this goes. Okay, we have ignition. Four and a half cyclic, left and right, no tail rotor. So all I'm gonna do is hand launch it, but I'm gonna use the throttle this time. See this? It's the way it used to turn it on and off. By pulling that switch down and when it would land, it would shut off, so you just had to fly it in like an airplane. Tonight, I'm using the speed controller. So here we go. So if I slow it down, see the torque goes away. I keep trying to move the tail rotor stick and there's no tail rotor. And that's the way it's done, folks.